Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I had a request to look at Q4OS, and I thought that'd be a neat one to look at. So the latest release, I believe, was just a few days ago, maybe about a week or so ago. So this is based on Debian, and it's targeted with stability, of course. And the distro itself, it does have a lot of little fantastic tools to get it running. So I have a, uh, the Plasma installed right here we're going to have a look at, and then we are going to look at the Trinity here as well. Now on their uh, web page here, if we have a look at their site, then uh, we have a basic simple, <laughs> my apologies, I thought I went over there earlier, but I didn't. Anyway, simple site. Head on over to the downloads page. We have the Plasma and we have a Trinity. We also have just the 32 and 64-bit just installation CDs, which are much smaller. They don't have the live keys on them. Uh, but if you want to test it out live, you can do the Plasma or the Trinity. If you're using the Plasma desktop, you need one gig and one gig, uh, one gigahertz CPU, one gig of RAM, five gigs of disk space. If you're using Trinity, 300 megabytes. Like, I think my second computer was 300 megabytes. That was almost 20 years ago. What type of computers are you people running distros on? Anyway, uh, you do have the option to go there, 128 megabytes of RAM. <clears throat> wow. Uh, they do have an installer for Windows, so uh, this is if you want to set this up alongside Windows. They have a uh, .exe file that you can run that will set this up right next to Windows. I have no idea how that runs. Raspberry Pi builds, uh, Raspberry Pi, and they have uh, two Pinebook builds there available. Some ARM ports, and there's some other things. We do have checksum files for all the different, uh, all the different uh, pages, and you can go to other legacy releases on their site. So that's actually pretty cool. I have a lot of different options, documentation, basically uh, frequently asked questions, setup and using Windows type setups, and we have our business page over here. They're looking for partnerships and things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at the uh, Plasma desktop here. All right, so we just booted the system off of the live key, and the first thing we actually get, uh, this is very nice. Actually, this worked out better because I was going to show you the installed system, but I think the installation on this is interesting. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. So the first thing it says here is we booted into this black screen. It gave us a little notification up here, and then it says, hey, let's run through some configurations. So sure, let's go do some configurations. The first is the monitor configuration tool. So it's defaulting on this 1024 by 768 monitor screen. I don't like that. Let's go back up to... What we're actually running, which is a HD monitor, so that's 1920 by 1080. Go ahead and apply that. Hit OK. Give this a second, and it's going to uh, start up into the Plasma desktop screen here, and then we will be set to go. All right. So we first boot up here. We have a desktop profiler. Uh, we have desktop effects, so this, of course, will give us nice, nice, cool effects, but it's going to take some extra system resources, so you don't want to do that unless you are, you know, unless you're running on a better system here. Um, the desktop profiler, if I remember correctly, so this guy here is just a single feature. Would you like to run a full feature desktop with a web browser, office suite, and recommended application set, or the basic Q4OS desktop with common utilities, system tools, and libraries? or just the ultimate minimal desktop, you'll be free to set everything up yourself. So that is actually uh, that is actually nice to have that option here. So here's the basic. Now, of course, we're going to get this when we run the install. And so uh, here is you can install extra desktop environments as well. LXQT, XFCE, LXDE, Mate, Budgie, Cinnamon, Gnome, and Trinity. Now, if you do these on the live key, they will not take. So I'm just going to close this out, and we will run the installer. It actually does not take more than a few minutes. So we'll get it started, walk through the installation process, and then we'll come back to the video when it is done installing. So just picking our keyboard layouts here, partitions. I'm just going to go ahead and erase the disk. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what we're doing here. Q4OS is the computer name. Let me do my secret secret password. That is definitely not 123. And hit install. And now it's just going to go ahead and install itself. It'll be uh, nice and quick and easy to install. 
And when we get back in, it's going to ask some more questions and things. And uh, this time we are not going to install the guest editions. Now, it's very possible that uh, the guest editions, when I tested this out, did break the system because I am using an older version of VirtualBox. That is a distinct possibility. So I'm not going to rule that out as, as anything. So we're going to come on back to this when we are done installing, and we will walk through the next setup and have a look at the system. All right, so the system is installed. So now we're gonna come over here and boot it up for the first time. STL, or is that one, two, three? Uh, whatever that password happens to be, it's definitely not one, two, three. So once again, here we get our configuring the system setup box. This occurs the first time you boot it up, where it's gonna ask us about the screen size and resolution. So this is uh, the display settings module if you're looking for that later on. If uh, you don't get this screen automatically, let's go 1920 by 1080, hit apply, and we should now be good to go. So now on the first install, we can do the full feature desktop with a web browser, office suite, recommended application set. We can install other desktop environments. This step actually will take a few minutes to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the basic desktop with common utility system tools and libraries. Actually, let's do the full full Office Suite one. I kind of want to see what it does. So this will actually take a few more minutes to install. So it's getting all the packages, installing things, and then it's just basically installing a bunch of things. Now you do have, again, the option to go complete minimal with pretty much nothing. And you have a basic desktop with basic configuration settings. So those are options that you have. You will still get the ability to install other desktop environments. I did not want to do that here just for the sake of time. So uh, you can see it's 30%. It's moving along quite well, but uh, it's actually just downloading stuff. And it's going to take, it's probably going to take about another five minutes at this point in time. So we're going to go ahead and come on back when this is done. And uh, we'll have a look at the desktop from there. All right, and we are done. So we're gonna go ahead and click the finish button and uh, see what we have kind of have. Oh, we need to reboot the computer now. Okay, well, let's go ahead and reboot the computer now. That's no problem with that. So we'll reboot this guy up. And uh, so we did notice it installs things that I don't like on Linux distribution. So I saw Google Chrome in there. It looked like it was installing LibreOffice 5.3, which, hey, this is based on Debian. So I can understand that, although I'd probably prefer to see a newer version, especially if we're going and targeting towards business enterprise, like I think these guys happen to be doing. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a second here to finish rebooting. Enter my super secret password. It's definitely not one, two, three. And let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. So we are booting back into full screen. Now, one of the things it's going to do is it's going to detect we're running a virtual machine and offer me to install virtual machine guest editions. I am not going to do that. And the reason is because it seems to break it on my particular version of VirtualBox. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and run with this. But this is our basic layout. So we have the desktop profiler. This is the tool that we just ran. Uh, so it says here, uh, you, would you like to install it? No, I do not want to. Would you like to be notified next login? No, do not notify me about virtual machines. Um, their, their notification screens definitely are reminiscent of Windows 95. Um, so that's uh, definitely interesting. Here's turning on desktop effects. So here's the various desktop effects. These are available inside of your uh, inside of your. Uh, settings inside of Plasma here. So we can turn things on, turn things off. Let's go ahead and push cancel. So there's switch to kick off start menu. So here is your basic Plasma menu. This is actually the menu I like to run when I'm on Plasma. Let's see what these, um, oh, that's available on Fraternity. Okay, well, it's something that, hey, would you like to install this? No, you can't. Okay. <laughs> we can install proprietary codecs. So now we're downloading multimedia codecs. And wow, this is also very reminiscent of Windows 95. So I guess they themed this guy up to look like an old Windows system. Uh, so let's go ahead and install the codex. Let this go. And that's actually all right. If you're looking for a good Windows replacement system, then uh, hey, why not, right? Let me see if we are actually uh, using desktop. Yes, we do have the ability here to... Um, use desktop uh, icons and things. We do actually have under our create new, they did give us actually a lot of things inside of our context menu here, which is actually quite impressive. Most Linux distros do not take this extra step, which I think is something many uh, Windows users might be looking for. So easy to set up, but I like the fact that they've actually taken that extra step and put that in there, which is very good. All right. 
So our proprietary codecs are set up. And let's have a look at the installation applications here. So we can install applications. So it looks like this is just a simple software center. Uh, there's Synaptic, Google Chrome, Chromium, Firefox, we have LibreOffice. Although I thought most of these are already installed, unless... Uh, oh, maybe these are what is already installed. So let's have a look at the menu. Let's see what's installed here by default. So under Education, we have Mathematics and Science. Under Games, we just have, let's see, Card Games. So Solitaire is there. Graphics, Document Viewer, Libre Draw. We have an Image Scanning Utility. <clears throat> Internet, we have Conqueror Web Browser, Google Chrome, and... Thunderbird. Multimedia, we have Clementine, uh, disc, two disc burning utilities, VLC, and a YouTube browser. Very cool. Under Office, we have the full LibreOffice suite, including our databasing. Go ahead and boot up LibreOffice. So we are getting LibreOffice 6. I was concerned that that would be the five branch because that's what I was seeing in the, in the coding, but I'm not exactly sure which... Uh, um, you know, what the package is calling for. So they're 6.1, a little bit older version of LibreOffice, but definitely LibreOffice 6. So no real big deals on that one there. Here's our basic system settings. No, all right, I, okay, fine. I enter my super secret one, two, three password, I guess. I guess we're configuring the firewall now. All right, so we can turn on or turn off the firewall. I'm behind a really beefy router, so I don't bother with the firewalls on the computers that never leave my office. Under our utilities, we have our file manager. So is this using Crusader? Welcome Crusader. First run, we'll check for external applications. Okay, so some batch remainders, all right. Okay, I don't care, just open the file manager, okay. Okay, so I guess this is just uh, a file manager like that. Let's uh, hopefully we still have something like Dolphin on here as well. Okay, good. I'm gonna say if that was my only file manager, wow, that's not user friendly. But no, we do have Dolphin here, so that's good. Uh, so that's there. All right. So now, now that I've had a look at this, it looks like Google Chrome is already here. Chromium is not. Uh, so it's not telling us what's already here. So that might be confusing for some users for sure. But if you want to install Firefox, we have this, Chromium, LibreOffice. So a lot of these are already installed. Uh, hey, here's a thing for NVIDIA drivers. If you want proprietary NVIDIA drivers, if the open source ones aren't good enough for you. Here's Wine as an option for installing Windows applications, VirtualBox guest editions. So what I like here is that uh, I do like the ability that... Uh, it has a simple simple install utility for a lot of applications. I don't like that it gives us it gives us the whole list, including the things that are already installed. Here we have uh, uh, Discover, excuse me, I said Dolphin. We have Discovery here, so we can install a variety of different applications using uh, using this. Let's see if things like Evolution are in here or not. So Evolution is in here. That's my preferred email client. Uh, we can, of course, install Firefox from in here if we want to. So we are getting Firefox ESR because this is based on Debian. So Firefox ESR is a long-term support Firefox. It doesn't push its new features quite as quickly, which honestly is good the way Firefox <laughs> runs these days. The desktop profiler again. So we have simple applications here. Let's... Um see how the installer works. So it looks like just kind of highlight the application, click the installer. It's going to go ahead and set the installation. So now it's going to be setting it up for us. So then we will be able to use it. So it does give us definitely a Windows type feel. So if you're looking to, uh, if you're looking to have a system that's a little bit more comfortable just in terms of UI, uh, GUI layout, this actually is not too bad. She does look kind of nice. Uh, I do wish that they would give us desktop icons and things like this. Like, we have the ability to turn them on, I think. Um, I think somebody corrected me on that before. I, I think I said there's the ability to add desktop icons. You can add desktop icons. I don't remember exactly how to do it. It's not like a, a toggle button switch. Like, you need to set shortcuts for it is how it works. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. And we're talking about things like having your... Um, uh, having your uh, home folder, your network folder, things like that. You can set those up if it's not as uh, as user friendly as as other 
as other systems are. There's add to favorites. We can add those to favorites if we want to. So they're kind of in a nutshell is uh, Q4 OS. Let's have a look at the system settings here. Um, I just want to see what kind of theming is available. So workspace theming. The ones that we have, so we're running, it looks like uh, Breeze. And so we're basically just running the simple Breeze workspace theme. Uh, desktop behaviors. There's screen edges, screen locking, virtual desktops. All right, so somebody asked on the comments there uh, as we were recording this, how do you change the screen resolution inside your system settings? I, I tried to find this the first time I realized there's so many settings inside of KDE. And you come all the way down, find hardware. Down here under hardware, we have uh, configuring printers. KDE Connect is connect an Android phone to it. But under, under your uh, display and monitors, this is where you're going to change your screen resolution. You can enable or disable certain displays. Uh, we have compositors, we have gamma settings. So there's a lot of different configuration options you can have. So that's where that is at. There's multimedia, audio volume, audio and video volume, various input devices, keyboards, mouse. So we have left hand, we have right hand. I don't have a joystick on here. I don't have a touchpad on here. So of course it tells me, hey, no touchpad. Here's your power management, so you can adjust your power management settings over here. So there's a lot of hardware configurations down here, of course, network, personalization, workspace, and appearance. So that's where you find all of those guys over there. So that is Q4 OS, and uh, that is uh, the Plasma desktop. We'll come back for the Trinity desktop. All right, so here we're going to have a look at the Trinity desktop. So we're going to run through the installation process, see what this guy looks like, and... Uh, have a look at uh, if this is going to be a better or worse build for us. Of course, this one's kind of built for the probably more the super low end computer that does not have as many system resources. This one does have that RAM requirement of 100 amazing, uh, 128 amazing megabytes of RAM. Shocking. And a 300 megahertz processor. I haven't seen one of those since 1999. So let's see how this guy happens to look. So we're kind of booting up. We have configuring the desktop theme, moving file system to RAM, configuring the system. All right, let's see, scaling factor. Our scaling factor looks just fine. I'm okay with our scaling factor. Let's see if it gives me the screen size resolution ability here as well, that'd be fun. All right, we are setting up the Trinity desktop. Should I follow the white rabbit people? All right. Okay, well, let's see. So here's our menu. Ooh, this is like, looks exactly like... I don't have a desktop audio turned on for you guys, but you we actually got like a Windows, uh, a Windows-esque um, uh, startup sound, which is kind of cool. Let's see, appearance and themes... There you go. There's one way to do it. <laughs> All right. Now we're full screen. I don't know where to find it on that. But uh, anyway, here we, now we can install Q4 OS. So I'm wondering if we will have the ability here to um, run the profiler like we did before. So setup is very similar. Let's go ahead and erase the disk. Q4 OS. Enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. <clears throat> and run the installation process. All right, so our installation is complete. So uh, I'm looking at the Trinity desktop for the first time in probably about a year there. And uh, the Trinity desktop is definitely going for a Windows XP feel. So if you really liked the style, look, and layout of Windows XP, it's going to be uh, definitely for you. So uh, username and my super secret password, which is definitely not one, two, three. Go ahead and get logged in here and see what it looks like. Okay, so we're configuring the desktop theme. Let's configure the scaling factors, which all looks fine to me. One thing I would like to change is the desktop environment. So, all right, please select a default application. So we have Trinity and we have KDE Plasma. Install and set KDE Plasma. That's the one we looked at in the other video. I wanna keep Trinity. So now we have the options to go with the full installation suites again. So let's go ahead and 
do that. And uh, this will probably take a few more minutes to do like it did the last time, although it's already at 100%. So uh, unless that's just, it looks like maybe that was just translation stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, come back on when this guy is done doing its thing. And uh, we'll have a look at the Trinity desktop. All right. So we have just finished our desktop profiler. So let's get into the system here. And let's see it. it. One of the things this is not giving me the nice option that the other one did of configuring my uh, screen resolution. So I did find that. Ooh, hear that noise? Ooh, it's so nice. It's so Windows XPS esque. So if we head on down to our system, monitors and displays, enter my super secret password. And I should now be able to do this. Okay, no, we do not want to install guest box editions. All right. It's everything is okay. Stop. I don't need your notification. Um, so in here, what I'm noticing is I am not actually able to change anything in here manually. So I have no idea why this is, but I can't change that. Uh, if I actually go into the terminal though, I should be able to, to change the app, the screen resolutions here. Hey kitty, don't type on my keyboard for me. Thank you. All right. So I could not change the desktop resolution in the actual control set panel settings, but I was able to do it through the terminals. So here's of course the desktop profiler, turn on desktop effects. Um, let's see what that gives me. They have been enabled. Okay. So I'd have to log in and log out again. Again, here is our, here is our, um, software application menu that we have. Pretty sure we're going to have the same applications that we had before. Very Windows XP ish, you can see here, except we can change the size of that. So, programs, accessories. I am not a fan of this menu. Holy crap, does that take forever to get into something? <laughs> uh, we have our games there, our internet, we have our web browser. We do have Kmail installed this time. I don't remember seeing Kmail installed on. Plasma, which is kind of odd, but we do have Kmail installed over there. We have a lot more K applications I'm seeing installed on the Trinity version of Q4OS. So, yeah, it, this is definitely an interesting uh, menu option there. Let's go ahead and switch to this one. So we have different categories. So we have Q4OS structure. Uh, we have the, let's look at the kickoff menu. Let's see what that looks like. So we're now set to that. So here is, it's basically like the, uh, it's very similar, it looks like, to the um, application launcher on there, except it's just as, it's, it's actually a little harder to use than the other one. That was interesting. And let's have a look at the classic. I guess if we change it to categories instead, it'll probably make it a little bit easier to do. So change it to categories, that's probably going to get us a better menu in my opinion. Yes, that's actually a little bit better of a menu. More Linuxy, less Windowsy, but it's easier to find things. And let's have a look at our classic menu here. Okay, so here's our basic classic menu. So you have a variety of different menus to choose from. I do like the original Bourbon menu. It gives me that that the Windows XP feel. We can install proprietary codecs if we would like to do that. So there's an option there. I think this is the Conqueror web browser, right? Yep, so that loads up the Conqueror web browser. We have Synaptic Package Managers installed over here. So if you do want to install more things, and uh, not sure if we have Discover on this one or not. Uh, we do not have Discover. Uh, which is something that we did have on the Plasma version. Of course, that's Plasma's software manager. Uh, we do have more desktop icons out of the box. So this one's definitely, if you really do truly want that classic Windows experience, this might actually be the the way that you go. It just has this, this full-fledged feel of it. So it's kind of, you know, <clears throat> is what it is. 
set desktop uh, so we can do a picture so there's a variety of different pictures that we have Let's apply that one see what that one looks like Ooh, there you go we want to go for a full-fledged windows look there you go we need something like that not quite as quite as nice as the windows one that's cool all right so we do have a nice desktop uh it's gonna it's gonna be very familiar again to your windows user uh windows demographic um it's it seems a little a little dated to me but you know hey what do you want right Okay. Fork of the K desktop environment, version 5. Yep, old version, old version KDE build. So there's Q4OS. Um, this is, uh, of course, the Trinity, the Trinity build of it. Let's go back into Office. Let's just see if by weird, some weird chance they gave us a different version of LibreOffice. I highly doubt they would have, but uh, have a look. 6.1, so... Not too bad. I do like uh, the look. It, it's this weird hybrid look. Um, we do have some nice transparency effects over here, and then your your uh, older skeuomorphics over there. So, yeah. Anyway, there's Q4 OS. Um, definitely interesting. So, why might you want to run Q4 OS? Well, it is. It definitely has a lot more system utilities that are built in for. Uh, your system utilities for installing things, getting things set up. I did find that the Plasma version did have a few more settings, a little bit more user-friendly than the Trinity did, particularly changing the screen resolution, at least here on the virtual machine. Uh, the tools and the installation options, I think that they're, they're very good. They're targeted, I think, towards maybe more of a business environment that wants to get something up quickly and easily. Uh, it is based on Debian, so you're going to have a little bit older packages. If that's okay with you, then then that's fine. Overall, definitely worth it. You are going to get a lot more stability out of this than some other distributions, I believe. Things aren't going to break quite as much for you. And, uh, you know, the release cycles are not insane that you're constantly having to rechange everything, which is really what you want in a business environment. So I would say that they've accomplished their goal. They have a, a really good system for a business environment. They have the, the more older Windows layout, the new win, uh, the new newer, you know, newer, more Linuxy layout. All those are good options. So overall, I think that this is a good distribution. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be running it specifically for a while, but uh, at the same time, for a multi uh, a multi-unit uh, business that has a lot of different computer systems that wants to use a, a good free linux distribution this is actually a good uh, a good logical place to go so uh kudos to that so let me know your thoughts on q4 os in the comments down below